On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1970. We're going to be taking a look at Bing Crosby with Dean Martin, and they're going to be performing a medley of hits. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Bing and Dean up on screen and see how they get on. I'm just breezing along with the breeze Yes, I'm trailing the rails And I'm roaming the sea Don't I do nothing here until then later, I'll come. I, the bird is at sing and the trees just look pretty. Please to live. And I'm living to please. Now open that mouth and let the golden sun shine out. The sky is the only roof I have over my head. Oh, that's luscious. When I'm weary, Mother Nature puts me to bed. I don't believe in fretting and grieving. No, nope. why mess around with strife? I never was cut up to step up and strut up. Just give me the simple life. I go too fast for you. Let me know. It's too late. My heart stopped too coarse. Get in there. Okay, this is your big shot. I bide my time in that night. Cause that's the kind of guy I. Folks go dizzy, I keep busy by my time. You stand out there. <laughs> next year, next year, something's bound to happen. This year, this year, I'll just keep on napping. You do it so well. I'm biding my time. I'm biding my time. That's the kind of guy. Now that's the kind of guy I am. No regretting when I'm sitting by my time. Lazy day, mm. just right for love and away. Lazy the kind of guy day, I am. made for a stroll in the lane. There's just you and me and the honeymoon. I'm just going to jump in here. As always, the link to this video is going to be available in the description below, so you guys can click on that to see it without me interrupting it. But getting into this analysis, I have done one previously on Dean Martin, if you want to check that out independently. But the thing to look out for with the whole vocal stylizations that are on show here are the slides, the way that we change pitch. And it is something that pops up in Frank's video a lot where I do mention the stylization of sliding from note to note rather than snapping from note to note. It is something that gives it that easy to listen to quality because we're sliding around from note to note and not going up and down steps. But Bing was the first real star of multimedia. When you're talking about being an actor and being a singer, being a radio presenter, being on TV, he just covered all of these different aspects, had such a wide skill set. But the important thing as well to mention about Bing is the way that he made use of technology as soon as it became available. What I'm referring to here is that Bing, when he was watching previous generations of singers, for example, Al Jolson, he would perform in a theater and Al would have to hit the back row of the theater as well as the front row because they didn't have amplification in those days. Whereas Bing, when he was performing, they did have amplification. So all of the techniques that Al would employ through necessity to reach the whole crowd, such as belting, it is a term that you would have heard before, when a singer is making a lot of noise, like shouting, creating a lot of volume, especially in chest voice and pushing their range higher up and belting, Classical singers can do this so well, but also control their resonance so that the voice projects to the back of the theater. 
Al would have had to have done that because he didn't have any other option. Whereas Bing, with the invention of amplification and having microphones that are now amplified, he could get close up to that microphone, get up close and personal. So Bing was the first guy who made the most of the intimacy of being able to be heard at a quieter volume, which means you can sound more conversational. And if we're looking at this performance, you couldn't find a better example of conversational singing because we're literally watching two guys sing while having a conversation and they're in exactly the same range as where they are talking. And that is what this style of singing is all about. Connecting on a deep level, obviously having control of your pitch and your vibrato and your vocal techniques, but just wrapping all of those vocal techniques up into a conversation. If you are analyzing the two approaches of the way that Bing uses the microphone and belting without a microphone, belting just naturally makes you lean backwards a little bit because somebody is effectively shouting. They are talking to you at volume so that you are on the back foot. Whereas the way that Bing sang using the power of the microphone it drew you in. So you're leaning into the performance, you're being involved rather than having that initial back step. Talking about the range going on here between Bing and Dean, we have a G sharp three all the way down to G sharp two. And this is something that in the very first verse, you'll be able to hear Bing change between a whole octave, but you're not really gonna notice that because it's all at this same level conversationally. It's not as if Bing is then suddenly belting to hit a high note. Something to look out for when we're talking about range is the way here that Dean, when he hits the G sharp two, which is the third fret of your low E string, if you have your guitars out, he dips his chin down in order to hit those notes. Obviously the vocal cords don't operate depending on where your chin is, but some singers, when they get right to the bottom of their range, they'll start to dip down in exactly the same way as when they're trying to hit a high note, they start to lift the chin because visually that's how they're approaching it. Mentally as well, they're seeing higher as up there and lower as down there. The reason it's interesting to see the difference in body language between these low notes is because Dean, I would think his natural range sits possibly a tone, maybe a note higher than that, so two to three notes higher than Bing's natural range and where it sits because Bing, you can see his body language is always the same. He's getting all the way down to that G sharp two without having to dip or think that he's going down low. He knows that he's got that range down there. A great example here as well of the entertainment side of performing and being at ease in each other's company, but having that rapport with each other and still having top quality vocals and performance it is something that sometimes the element of entertainment is thrown in there because there isn't the level of quality and it has to kind of hide the level of quality of performance with the humor and the entertainment. Whereas when we're talking about back in the 60s and the 70s, this video is 1970, it's just full of artists who had the ability with the entertainment. The other thing that you'll notice in this performance and just with the overall vocal delivery that Bing and Dean have here is that they're not chasing high notes. If anything, they're chasing low notes. And this is all about the style of music, the whole crooner attitude and delivery. It is just hitting that conversational space, but also taking it underneath where you would normally talk. So if we did have a G sharp three and I went, ah, ah, it's quite a thin sound. Whereas if we take that same note down to where Bing is singing it and we have, ah, ah, that is now an octave below. That's the G sharp two that Bing is hitting. Obviously when Bing hits it, it sounds totally different. It is really low in my range, but Bing had mastery over his whole range, especially that bottom end where he could put so much body in there, so much expression. And that is what really did set him apart from the other singers at the time who would try and sing the same songs 
but they wouldn't sound the same. They didn't have the same tonal quality and control that Bing had. It goes without saying that Bing would have inspired so many future generations of singers and Dean Martin being one of those. And Frank Sinatra has also cited Bing as a massive influence. Sammy Davis Jr. as well, pretty much the whole Rat Pack, you can throw those all in there as being hugely influenced by Bing and his vocal stylizations, the sliding from note to note and also keeping it conversational, singing in that range. But let's get back into the performance and we'll watch it all the way to the end. You gone fishing. Mm -hmm. You ain't working anymore. Ain't working three months. I saw your hoe out in the sun. Yeah. You left a row half done. I did that. I did that. You claim hoeing ain't no fun. Daddy, you ain't got no ambition. No, no. You gone fishing. Oh, yeah. By a shady, weedy pool. A weedy pool. I'm kind of wishing I could be that kind of fool. I'd say no more work for mine On my door I'd hang a sign What to say? Gone fishing Yes Instead of just A wishing Up the lazy river By the old man run Lazy, lazy river New day sun Falling over the sea With a kind of dream Why don't you throw away your troubles Dream a dream with me Oh, up the lazy river with a robin song Waves a bright new morning We can loaf for long Blue skies up above Everyone's in love Up the lazy river How happy you can be Up the lazy river with me You work and slave For years and years You're always on the go you never take a minute off Too busy making dough <laughs> Someday you'll say You'll have your fun When you're a millionaire Imagine all the fun you'll have In your old rocking chair Woo! Enjoy yourself It's later than you think Enjoy yourself why you're still in the pink The years go by As quickly as a wing Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself It's later than you think Go Going along as we please Freezing along With a breeze Roaming over seven seas And there we have it. Just for reference, that final note that we hear is a C sharp four, and it is quite literally ending on a high note because throughout all of the previous songs that the guys have been singing through, this is the highest pitch that we ever get to. And that's exactly where you want to leave your audience, at the peak of that mountain. And make sure that when you reach the end of your journey, you reach that peak. But a fantastic performance here from Dean and Bing. And you're never thinking about the vocal ability or anything other than just appreciating the singing and just buying into the rapport between the two of them and the enjoyment factor. Because when you're just watching two fantastic artists in their own right, they are so confident in their own ability that comes across and that's why you enjoy it so much. I do want to try and cover a little bit of Bing's history and his career in this video. Obviously, covering somebody like Bing Crosby, he was so prolific with the recordings, everything that he did in pretty much every form of media that it's gonna be impossible to fit it all into one video, but I will try and cover as much as I can briefly. So just regarding his name, Bing, it was something that was used as a nickname for him by one of his neighbors because it was initially Bingo. They had 
a cartoon or a comic feature in their local paper, which is called the Bingville Bugle. And the cartoon in there was called Bingo from Bingville. And it just got shortened to Bing. That was the nickname that the neighbor gave to Bing and it just stuck. It was in 1917 when Bing was 15 years of age that he got a job at Spokane's Auditorium as a property boy. And the bonus of having this job is that he got to watch all of the acts, including Al Jolson, who he was hugely influenced by, became a massive fan. And when he was 20 years of age, he started singing in groups. And he also joined up with Al Rinker, who accompanied him on piano. So Alan Bing sought fame in California and it just so happened that Al's sister was singer Mildred Bailey and she organized for the guys to hook up with a talent agency and through that they were spotted by a member of the Paul Whiteman organization and it just so happened that at the time Paul was looking for an act to break up the current roster that he had and he thought that they possessed the sound that he was looking for. So they got hired within less than a year that they actually went to California seeking fame. They were now attached to one of the biggest names in the industry. The singer and pianist Harry Boris joined the lineup and in 1928 they released Old Man River, which was a massive number one. And they became very popular as a band, but Bing became even more popular as a solo singer and it was inevitable. Unfortunately, that they would go their separate ways and that Bing would proceed as a solo artist. And it would be in 1931 that he made his radio debut as a solo artist. To put things in perspective, in that year when he made his solo debut, 10 of the top 50 songs in the charts in 1931 were Bing, or at least had Bing on them, whether he was singing with another artist or singing a song himself, he totally dominated the charts. And also his use of technique with the microphone stood out because of that personal quality, getting up close and personal with that microphone to get that conversational quality. So when people put on the records, it was like he was there in the room with them. Around this time as well, he met Louis Armstrong and became great friends. In 1936, he starred in Pennies from Heaven, and that is also a film that Louis featured in. And Bing actually made sure that Louis was treated exactly the same way, everything was equal, and it was a totally different time. And Bing really did stand up for equal rights for everybody, and Louis, his good friend, he was gonna make sure, was treated in exactly the same way that he was. In 1941, Bing released White Christmas, and you don't need me to tell you that it was a monster hit, and it still is a monster hit. It remains the best-selling single of all time, and just an interesting bit of trivia about that, the version that they recorded in 1941 isn't the version that you know, because they had to re-record it in 1947 due to the master that they used to press the singles getting damaged because of the amount of singles they had to press because of the demand. They could not use it anymore and had to get in the studio and release the exact same song again and then they could press that version of it, and that is the version that we now know. In 1945, the stars really didn't get any bigger than Bing Crosby, and in that same year, he was voted as the top morale booster of troops from the war. Of course, we're talking around that time, just the end of the war when that survey was completed. He also starred in movies, as we know, his acting, winning awards, and he's also known for his work with Bob Hope which lasted a very long time as well from 1940 onwards. He was on TV all the time. I'm not going to have time to cover everything, but an important thing to mention about Bing was the fact that he did get involved with songwriting and he did write and co-write 22 songs. Just to throw in there as well, something that I alluded to earlier with his use of technology, we referred to the microphone and the way that he used that but also the use of tape because he used to have a radio show that he would tape and he was one of the first people to do this, if not the first, to record his radio shows in advance. So he would approach it in exactly the same way as modern TV shows would where they record something previously 
and then just put it out at the time and they're not doing it live obviously it's pre-recorded but when we think about the times this was revolutionary that you could be listening to something live that wasn't actually happening and Bing Crosby had figured this all out he bought a tape machine which wasn't cheap back in the day because it was a new invention and he had this tape machine record songs and him talking all of the parts of the radio show to the point where he would start to cut out and edit the tape to put together, for example, the good performances and take out the bad performances sometimes where he might make a mistake and the audience would laugh. Obviously, when they're watching it, it's great. It's very lighthearted. But for the radio show, when it went out live, all of that had been edited out. So it was a very smooth radio show. And that's why it was so successful because of the professionalism that Bing had and the grasp of the technology that he had at such an early stage to start doing on the radio what TV companies would be doing in the future. As I'm sure you understand, I can't cover all of Bing's career in this video. Just to mention that that sadly he did pass away in 1977 at the age of 74 and this was on the golf course or at least he had just finished a round of golf as a four ball which means that he was playing with three other players and it was in Spain his final words were that was a great game of golf fellas let's get a coke and he died instantly just 20 yards from the clubhouse from a massive heart attack but it's great to have a look back at being here performing with one of those guys that was inspired by Bing himself, and it must have been great for Dean Martin here to perform with somebody who he respected so much. Thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.